We hear a lot about Acts chapter 2 these days. Chapter 2 is full of vitality, full of the power of God. It speaks about the coming of the Holy Spirit to the church. The impact made by the Spirit's coming was huge on that day, the day of Pentecost. And the impact of the Holy Spirit ever since has continued to be huge. It's not surprising that Acts chapter 2 is seen as having something powerful to say to us. But the first thing to say about that day is that it was unique. It was the birth of the church. Think for a moment. When Acts chapter 2 occurred, there'd never been any Christians. The message was brand new. There'd been no bad examples, no distortions of the gospel, no governments building their nation on the words of Jesus, and no counting of calendar dates back to his birth. When we share the gospel message today, we're confronted by people who have a distorted view of Christianity. They may have seen or lived with bad examples. Nations have built their structures on God's word, and some have grown complacent about it. Many people have become so familiar with Christianity that they've taken it for granted or missed the point of it altogether. If the Salvation Army has needed to change its methods of evangelism from those used in the 19th century, why should we imagine first century methods are okay for today? Think about it. William Booth updated the methods for the 1800s. We need to update them for our generation. But while methods change, the message and the power behind the message remain the same. The early church spoke of the household of faith. And we need to remember that on the day of Pentecost, initially, all the followers were literally in one house. The church, numerically, was that small. As the church grew, it produced its ideals. Acts chapter 2 tells us they had everything in common. They sold and shared their possessions and goods. They thought and prayed about the same things. God did remarkable things through them. It was a remarkable time and the church kept growing. But as it got larger, it became more difficult to manage or lead, impossible to control. By Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira are telling lies and keeping certain things for themselves. By chapter 6, the Grecian Jews are complaining about discrimination. And Paul's letters to the churches tell a sorry tale of sin, as well as inspiring stories of faith and courage. So when we look at Acts chapter 2, we need to get real. Don't expect things to be as they were. The important thing, and this has always been the important thing, is that the early church Christians were filled with the Holy Spirit. Once they allowed God fully into their lives, they were effective for Him. And that's still the only way we'll be effective for Him today.